So as a Catholic female, I wanted to share my point of view on this feminist movement. So first of all, the view of the church, just the overall Christian church, would be that women, like 1 Corinthians, Paul talks about it, Peter talks about it, women submit to your husbands, and then men love your wives as Christ loved the church. So as women in the Bible, uh, women are called to submissiveness. I would be called to submissiveness to my husband, which for some reason in our culture has been viewed as a negative thing. So we talk about anything that's competitive. We don't want to um, like lay down for anybody. We don't want to, to, to actually give somebody else the upper hand. So in Christianity as a whole, we're called to be Christ's servants. So ultimately for me, I'm at an advantage almost, it seems like, to my male counterpart because I'm actually, like, it's my calling to submit, which means that I have a certain level of submissiveness that I would offer Christ in submitting to my husband, and then he's to love me and know me. When we think about how Christ loved the church, um, I mean, he studied the church. He knew every aspect of it. So, and that's what we long for as women is to be known and is to be loved. And so where the, the males, like they're called to do that. So then we have this feminist movement where women want to make the same amount of money as men. And listening to this, I, I, I re-listened to Emma Watson's speech this morning. And just listening to it, it almost was sounding like an entitlement. Like, I'm a woman and I deserve to make as much as my male counterpart. As much as, so the ultimate thing that women are looking for in this is respect, right? Like, we want dignity. We want to say in what's going on. Um, it's difficult to, to compare dignity with an entitlement to the same amount of money, though. Because, first off, money shouldn't determine value. So no matter what, however much somebody makes, maybe it's a societal norm that, that it's whoever makes the most money has the biggest, you know, I mean, and that's the thing with men. <laughs> like, so men have egos, right? Women have egos too, but the ultimate thing is, you know, my dad always taught me the, the number one thing is never say something that would hurt a male's ego because that's literally what he has. And so... But as women, we have tender hearts, we nurture, I mean, we have children. Men can't have children unless it's scientifically changed and it's, it's, it's developed in a lab and, and this whole other culture comes forward with that, right? But so sticking with what, what's natural though, women have babies. And in the olden days, men were the hunter-gatherers and they were the ones that went out and got the food. And that's ultimately... I mean, we look at the high level of divorce nowadays, we look at the, the arguments and the anger and the unhappiness that's between so many couples, and I mean, it makes sense that it would be because the male's ego isn't fully being fed, and the women are trying to dominate the husbands, and it just, it doesn't actually line up with, because when we do look at the structures and the families that do have the submissive wife and do have the male who's making more money, I mean, I've had guys say that they couldn't marry a woman who made more money than them. So, and maybe, you know, a woman would just need to, but there, there's a certain level of fulfillment that a male could never achieve if his wife was making more money. It just, it's not, it doesn't, it ends up not lining up. And if it is that way, then the man ends up feeling less of a man. And I know this from personal experience with conversations I've had with men in this situation. So um, I'm all for respect for women. Uh, the Bible calls for it. That's exactly what the church would teach as well. As far as, you know, men and women, the work, women are called to submit and men are called to love their wife as their church, so, as Christ loved the church. So it really boils down to just taking taking a step back and allowing ourselves to to feel what Christ has developed us to feel. And I mean, as far as men feeling like girls and girls feeling like boys and all these development, all these behaviors are learned, maybe to a certain extent, but when we look at the overall spectrum, it's a hormonal thing. 
I mean, men generally have a higher level of testosterone than women. Some women have higher testosterone levels, and but overall, women are estrogen driven and men are testosterone driven, right? So, if I suppose if somebody was feeling a different way, it could be a hormonal imbalance. I mean, people feel depressed because of a chemical imbalance. It's not because depression is an actual like healthy state to be in. So, and we typically do things to correct that. So. It's the same thing with the hormonal levels, I would I would say. So that's basically it for today. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. I uh, aside I know we had the de the deflated football incident or whatever, but with the two millimeters or whatever. I don't know. But go Patriots. I'm a Brady girl and I always will be. But um but yeah, so have a happy day and we'll see you guys again next Sunday. Thanks for watching.